talk about perhaps the best leadership book you could ever purchase. And it's the book written by John Wooden, and it's called Wooden on Leadership. Written by the legendary coach John Wooden. Hey, John Wooden. Hey, John Wooden. Is he? Written by the legendary John Wooden. Alright, this book is one of my all-time favourites when it comes to leadership. Now, if you're asking yourself, why do I need to learn about leadership? There's a simple reason for doing so. Learning leadership is not just for people who lead teams. Learning leadership is firstly about leading yourself. This is vitally important in changing our lives. There is no more powerful leadership tool than your own example. In almost every way, the team ultimately becomes a reflection of their leader. Teach by your own example. Coach Wooden had 15 personal qualities which led to success. The first two which formed the foundation of the pyramid were industriousness and enthusiasm. And without them, you couldn't build any more of the levels, either in between or above it. So you had to start with the two pillars. And industriousness was hard work. Wooden goes on to say that you must rise early and work late. He called it industriousness because work, as performed by most people, isn't real work. Rather, it's going through the motions, putting in time, and enduring boredom. Many people will complain, he says, about a hard day at the office when in fact they didn't lift a finger or think a thought. That's not work. He had something in mind. The kind of work in which you are fully engaged, totally focused, and completely absorbed. There is no clock watching and there is no punching in and out. Industriousness means true work. And uh, which is also related to flow. Enthusiasm. Work without joy is drudgery. Drudgery does not produce champions. You must be filled with energy, eagerness, and joy for what you do. And again, enthusiasm is what gets you over the, the hard times. Whenever, whenever there's a struggle, you, you're going to get through with enthusiasm. The three pillars in between, the, the two main pillars, uh, friendship, loyalty, and cooperation. Now, friendship was mutual respect and camaraderie, which allows a team to reach further. Those under your leadership will give everything they have if you show them this part of yourself. <laughs> loyalty. Be loyal to those you lead. It starts with loyalty to yourself, your standards, and your values. Care about those in your team. Provide fairness and respect, dignity and consideration, and cooperation. Listen to others and embrace their opinions and in creativity. Learn, Listen and learn. Change and grow. Friendship, loyalty, and cooperation are the sincere and solid bonds necessary between you and those you lead. Moving up to the next tier, it starts with self-control. Control of self is essential for, consistent, for consistency in leadership and team performance. Control of your organization begins with control of yourself. The choices you make in your personal life affect your professional life. They are not two separate entities. And I've had this argument again and again with a really close friend. He said, you can separate them. I was like, no, you, the person that you want to give your best to, to put out your best, is the person that, that has integrity that doesn't separate uh, who they are at work and who they are outside of work. Okay, uh, they are not two separate entities and leaders who act as if they are will likely bring difficulties upon themselves. To be a true leader requires credibility and consistency in one's actions and the sort of leader that, that I would be honoured to follow as a person who, who does have the integrity and who who is the same person in work as they are outside. A team with a good dis with good discipline is simply a reflection of a self-disciplined leader. Alertness. Constantly observe, absorb, and learn. Strive always for continuous improvement. Initiative, which is another block. Mistakes are part of the process. Make decisions, act, fail, and learn. Failure is necessary for success. Fail, make mistakes, and learn. Mistakes are part of progress. And intentness, or persistence. Diligence and determination, fortitude and resolve, which is persistence. Achieving worthwhile goals requires intentness. Persevere when hardship is forced upon you and those you lead. And it goes back to the, one of the two founding blocks, uh, eagerness, uh, sorry, enthusiasm. And that will get you through those hard times because you have love for what you do. Okay, condition. To achieve one's potential as a leader requires mental and moral strength. The leader must set the example. Bring in, bring in good physical, mental, and moral conditioning is bringing in good physical, mental, and moral conditioning is essential to being a consistently effective and productive leader. Skill.
continuous learning and improvement. The best leaders are lifelong learners. Foster and inspire learning. Another block is team spirit, otherwise called unity and teamwork. An eagerness to sacrifice personal interests or glory for the welfare of all. What helps the team ultimately helps the individual. Poise. This is an attribute which is earned when you when the previous qualities have been achieved. You will know you possess uh, poise is the second last tier. Uh, poise and confidence are the two second last tiers before competitive greatness at the top or success. So poise is an attribute which is earned when the previous qualities have been achieved. You'll know you possess poise when you achieve what Rudyard Kipling described in his poem written a hundred years ago. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two impostors just the same, that's poise. Not being thrown off stride in what you believe or how you behave because of outside events. So nothing, uh, you're not affected by the external uh, circumstances. It, it's, it's all coming from within. Confidence. Well-founded self-belief, which comes from knowing your preparation is complete. You must earn the right to be, comf uh, to be confident. Competitive greatness, which is the final tier. This is the final block. Coach Don Wooden defined competitive greatness as a real love for the hard battle, knowing it offers the opportunity to be at your best when your best is required. The great competitors share a joy derived from the struggle itself, the journey, the contest, the opportunity to summon the best within and reach for personal greatness. The hard struggle is to be welcomed. And uh, you get competitive greatness when all those other blocks uh, or all those other attributes or qualities are... Uh, are achieved and you, you, at only that point you're actually able to achieve competitive greatness which is what most people uh, strive for in life uh, without them without themselves actually knowing but the the main part of the the main part of the I should have written something for this but I didn't so I'll have to end right there like to talk about perhaps the best leadership book you could ever purchase it's the book written by John Wooden and it's called Wooden on Leadership written by the legendary coach John Wooden hey John Wooden hey John Wooden is he written by the legendary John Wooden all right this book is one of my all-time favorites when it comes to leadership now if you're asking yourself why do I need to learn about leadership there's a simple reason for doing so. Learning leadership is not just for people who lead teams. Learning leadership is firstly about leading yourself. This is vital.